There's another type of transport that's possible for when a cell needs to move substances up the concentration gradient, not down the concentration gradient. In this case, the cell would probably need to use something like active transport, where energy is involved in the transport process. This definitely requires the use of ATP molecules, energy carrier molecule, and a lot of times the carrier proteins that are involved, we refer to them as pumps, because that's literally what they do. They move something um, uphill from low concentration to high concentration, so it's making something more highly concentrated, just like a pump would do. A couple of different types of active transport primary versus, versus secondary. What's the difference between these? Well, in the case of primary active transport, ATP is hydrolyzed directly and that causes the protein to do its job. And we're going to be looking at some examples of this in just a little bit. Sodium potassium pumps, we'll be seeing these a lot later on in the course. So using an ATP molecule is what activates the pump in this case. Secondary active transport just like its name implies, there are sort of two things that have to happen. So first, there would have to be some sort of a concentration gradient established with some molecule. A lot of times it's going to be a sodium ion. Okay, so this will become more highly concentrated on one side of the membrane. Often that involves ATP um, to get it concentrated on one side of the membrane. And then the second thing that happens is that molecule will flow back down its concentration gradient to drive the movement of something else. So it's a secondary active transport. Uh, active because ATP was needed in the first place to establish a gradient, and then um, secondary because something else is getting moved in the second place. So we'll look at a couple of examples of this going forward. Let's just start with primary active transport. We're gonna take a look at the calcium pump first off. So we're gonna walk through some of these examples and elaborate on this a little bit more. Starting with the calcium pump. The calcium pump is something that's located on all cells and it's also in the endoplasmic reticulum of certain muscle cells. We'll be encountering this when we look at the muscular system later on and how it functions. Right now we just wanna use this kind of as an example of primary active transport. So let's look at the key points here. We've got the membrane right here. This membrane has a carrier protein embedded in it. And this carrier protein has a binding site for calcium ions. So um, notice inside of the cell here in the cytoplasm, we have a low concentration of calcium. Out here, we have a high concentration of calcium in the extracellular fluid. Nonetheless, we want to move this calcium outside of the cell. Why would we do this? This is gonna help with a lot of different signaling mechanisms that we'll see later on. And so calcium, the calcium ion will bind to the binding site and then this carrier protein will undergo a shape change when ATP um, is used. So uh, ATP is going to be cleaved, the inorganic phosphate is going to attach to this carrier protein and cause it to undergo a shape change. So then the calcium ion will get shuttled out to the other side, shipped out to the other side, and transport has just been accomplished. Another example of primary active transport is the sodium potassium pump. This one you'll definitely want to know. The sodium potassium pump is very, very important. So, and it's also very interesting. Here we've got a membrane and we've got a carrier protein embedded right here. Uh, cytoplasm on the left, extracellular matrix on the right. And what this pump is going to do is it's gonna transport sodium in one direction. It will take three sodium ions, transport those out of the cell, and at the same time, it's going to take two potassium ions and transport those inside of the cell. And all of this is powered by a molecule of ATP being hydrolyzed. And so this is really, really important. This serves many different functions for cells. Um, for one thing, it establishes that concentration gradient for sodium. That can then be used to drive transport of other things with secondary active transport. Um, but this is also going to establish an electrochemical difference outside of the cell than inside of the cell. Okay, we just transported three positive charges out and two positive charges in. So the net result is that, that the extracellular fluid is more positive than the fluid inside of the cell. That's gonna be really important. This is largely how neurons are able to send signals is due to that difference in charge. 
The sodium potassium pumps are also critical just in maintaining normal osmolality. They're sort of shuffling things around and getting the osmolality to be just right. I would like for you to know the steps of how this pump functions. And here they are, the specific steps. So first off, we've got those three sodium ions that bind from the cytoplasm into, into the pump. They bind, they enter the pump and bind. Um, next up, ATPase is going to become active. It's going to hydrolyze a molecule of ATP. That in turn is going to block both openings on the carrier protein, both this opening and this opening. Next up, ADP gets released. That causes a shape change, which forces the, the um, sodium ions to leave the, the carrier protein. So they leave, they exit to the outside of the cell. Finally, next up, two potassium ions enter from the outside. Here they are, they come in, they bind, and that causes inorganic phosphate to be released from the carrier protein. In the end, uh, the pump returns to its original conformation, which allows those potassium ions to be released to the inside of the cell. So that's the sodium potassium pump. We'll be seeing this pump a lot. Best to learn the details of it now so you'll be ready for it later on. Let's look at secondary active transport. Glucose is the example we're going to use here. Um, what we've got here is a carrier protein in blue. We are showing a little sodium ion. We just learned about how this gradient can be established. Okay, so maybe there's, uh, there's a lot of sodium on this side of the cell membrane, but not so much on the inside of the cell. So what's gonna happen is that sodium gradient is going to be used to power the transport of glucose. All right, so um, what we've got here is a molecule of glucose outside of the cell. We wanna bring it inside of the cell. Okay, and the way that, that this pump is going to be powered is with the gradient of sodium ions. So in this whole process, sodium moves down its concentration gradient and that powers this pump um, to bring glucose inside of the cell. This is causing glucose to be moved up its concentration gradient while sodium is moving down its concentration gradient. So pretty interesting transport mechanism there.